Warrell County has its first confirmed case of the coronavirus, bringing the Panhandle's total number of cases to 32. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Unified Command has confirmed the first positive for COVID-19 in Morrill County, as well as one new case in Cheyenne County and two new cases in Scottsbluff County. The Morrill County case is a female in her 70s, while the Cheyenne County case is a male in his 60s. The two new positives in Scottsbluff County are both females, one in her 40s and the other in her teens. The initial investigations have begun and more details will be released when they are complete. Through Tuesday evening, more than 500 tests have been conducted in the Panhandle with 32 total cases, with 10 already recovered from the symptoms. PPHD officials are encouraging all Panhandle residents to stay home, stay healthy and stay connected. Looking at the statewide picture now, as Nebraska has its 19th and 20th COVID-19 related deaths, both older males with underlying health conditions from Douglas and Custer counties. Yesterday, the state's positive case numbers surpassed the 900 mark, but more than 10,800 tests coming back negative. Well, state officials have loosened restrictions aimed at helping local restaurants. It was announced yesterday that local eateries can now also sell retail grocery essentials like milk, eggs, meat, paper towels, and toilet paper after the state waived a requirement of needing items to have a nutrition label. Zoe Olson, the executive director of the Nebraska Restaurant Association, says this could have a big impact in Nebraska communities. And so now we can provide, uh, through those bars and restaurants, access to food and supplies for co consumers in more rural areas. It will allow consumers to shop in smaller groups than we are seeing at traditional retail stores right now. It allows you to purchase staple items with food deliveries to promote social distancing. And you can, it'll provide an alternative way to shop as many shopping services may have a three to five uh, day wait time due to increased demands. Olson says the hope is this move allows restaurants and bars a better chance of keeping their doors open by allowing this additional revenue stream. Well, coming up after the break, rain and snow are on their way. Bill Boyer breaks it all down in our midweek forecast here on KNEB.TV News. Local lending. We are here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community. Investing in entrepreneurship. making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. For the past 44 years, Platte Valley Vacuum and Sewing has been serving the Wyobrask area. That's quite a long time. At Platte Valley Vac and Sew, you'll find quality sewing machines, quilting and embroidery machines, even sergers from name brands such as Foff and Baby Lock, both known for their well-made machinery. Keep in mind you'll receive one-on-one -on -one lessons with your machine purchase. Platte Valley Vac and Sew also offers a fine selection of 100% cotton quilting fabrics and a great selection of threads and notions to assist you in most any quilting or embroidery project you might have. For all your sewing machine quilting needs, stop by Platte Valley Vac and Sew, downtown Scotts Bluff. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. As we look across the area over the next few hours, we're going to expect clouds on the increase. It's been pretty cloudy out there. Snow going to develop uh, this evening and then becoming more widespread overnight, uh, especially here in this time frame uh, between six uh, midnight and 6 a.m. That's when we're going to start to see the snow develop out there and uh, bring snow to the region, and it is going to be moderate to heavy at times. So do expect 
uh, winter storm warning to be in effect. Snow is going to develop again heavy at times. We're looking at some widespread accumulations. Should turn nicer though by the weekend. Yesterday that nine degrees I told you that was going to set a record low and it sure enough did uh, beating the previous record of 12 back in 1933. We did get to 50 yesterday afternoon. Nothing in the rain gauge, still well below normal for the month and year, but we're going to here over the next few hours. Well, we do have winter storm warnings in effect. The winter storm warnings in the pink shaded area. They run from areas just north of North Platte through Ogallala and then back into the southern half of the Nebraska Panhandle and then back into Torrington, Wheatland, and southeastern Wyoming. Within that, there's pretty high confidence of some heavy snowfall especially areas along and south of the North Platte River and uh, including all of the southern portions of the Nebraska Panhandle. Area inside there is where we expect the heaviest snowfall uh, to be across the region as we go through the evening hours tonight. Now, as we zoom out a ways, you can actually see that uh, winter storm warnings are in effect just south of the Omaha metro area as well as we have another area there experiencing some winter storm conditions and really winter weather advisories roll all across the I-80 corridor across Nebraska uh, as across the whole state. Very nice right now, 52 in Hastings. We are at uh, 46 in Norfolk, uh, last check, 62 down in Hayes, 33 in Rapid City. Craig checks in at 42 right now, closer to home. Uh, you could see, uh, not hard to see where the colder air has started to come in out of the north and west with bringing in some much cooler rain um, air uh, out there with temperatures in the 30s and low 40s. Winds have been pretty stout throughout the day. They've been out of the north uh, and northwesterly direction throughout the day today. And uh, we expect those winds to continue as we go through the evening hours. Wind chills are down into the uh, 20s in Lusk, 30s to near 40 for a lot of uh, locations and then st warmer down around Ogallala. We're going to roll through Futurecast. We're going to take this kind of slow as we go through the evening hours tonight now. Uh, we're going to start to see snow develop here across the area. Any rains will quickly turn over to snow. Snow should be ongoing overnight across the region. And you can see here by early tomorrow morning a band of some heavier snow where that band of heavy snow sets up ultimately is going to dictate where the heaviest snow will fall. All models, though, in pretty good agreement, it's going to be from far southeastern Wyoming into the southern portions of the Nebraska Panhandle. Lows tonight in the 20s. So there's that heavy snow early tomorrow, already ongoing. And as we go through the day, that snow shifts off to the south and east and then pushes away by afternoon. Snow should start to taper off to flurries and then pull ultimately all the way away from us here and clear out tomorrow night into early Friday morning. And we start our warm-up on Friday. It'll be tempered Friday better for Saturday. Tomorrow's highs really only in the 30s, not going much of anywhere here across the region. So snowfall totals, again, we told you the heaviest snow appears to be in uh, the southern portions of the Nebraska Panhandle and uh, portions of southeastern Wyoming. Now this particular forecast, we're going to call for two to four inches in the Scotts Bluff area, three to six inches around Kimball and Sydney, lesser amounts off to the north. Want to point though out right along that boundary, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see areas here uh, from Scotts Bluff to Torrington, just south of those areas, heavier snow bands. We literally could be dealing across Scotts Bluff County alone with heavier snow bands as close as, say, uh, the Gearing area could get far more snow than the Scotts Bluff area and even more towards the Wildcat Hills. So it's going to be very concentrated in a few areas. Tonight, we're going to be dealing with snow becoming steadier and heavier overnight. Lows down around 22 degrees, breezy as well. Those winds at 15 to 25, 10 to 20, occasionally 25 mile an hour winds tomorrow. Snow will taper off in the afternoon, temps in the mid 30s, and then a very nice seven day forecast. Beyond then, we start the warm up for the weekend in the low 60s. 70s look possible as we get into the early portions of next week. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant and full service gas leader. Now more than ever, you need an affordable unlimited plan that fits your family budget. 
That's why Vieira Wireless is introducing our better unlimited plan. It's our best priced unlimited plan ever, starting as low as $30 a month for four lines of unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data. Want high-definition video with rollover high-speed hotspot data? Then choose our best or ultra unlimited plans, the best value plans in America for everyone. Vieira Wireless, are you ready for better? Think a utility vehicle should do more than take you places? So does Kubota. That's why our all-new Sidekick is built to do it all. Climb more. Tow more. Go more. Cross over to more today. Take your Kubota Sidekick home with no money down and 0% financing for 36 months. Your local Kubota dealer is Sandberg Ippelman and Gehring. Welcome back. Regional West is in the process of identifying staff that will be furloughed on a temporary basis beginning on Sunday due to declines in patient volumes for procedures, testing, and clinic visits due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The hospital is also making temporary pay reductions throughout their health system that will include executive and leadership teams as well as providers. CEO and President John Mentkin says leadership across Regional West continues to meet daily to evaluate and update response tactics, operational plans, and to develop innovative strategies to provide healthcare services. While well, scammers are getting even more brazen during the coronavirus pandemic, now using texts with official looking details to try to get you to part with your personal information. Scottsbluff County Health Director Paulette Schnell says one of the latest versions reported in the panhandle involves the reporting of a positive COVID-19 test result. Schnell says there are often clues in the message that say they are a scam, including failure to properly capitalize formal names, or they don't give you specific details on where to call for further guidance. Schnell says those with positive test results will always receive direct contact by phone from public health officials who will also confirm a person's identity before discussing any personal health information. And activists with the group True Nebraskans who pushed for a statewide ballot measure to lower property taxes here in Nebraska have suspended their campaign due to the coronavirus. Organizers say the state's social distancing restrictions have made it too difficult to collect enough signatures by the July 2nd submission deadline. The group pulled its circulators off the streets on March 19th. Now, if they had gathered enough signatures, their proposal would have appeared on the November general election ballot. The proposal would have given a state-funded rebate to Nebraska taxpayers equal to 35% of the taxable value of their property. Well, straight ahead, we'll head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society to meet their featured Pet of the Week. We'll have that in just 90 seconds. Hey, I've been hanging out here a long time outside of Panhandle Auto Group, and boy, do they have a great selection of vehicles. And their sales team is great to work with, and you can also get your vehicle serviced in detail, too. Welcome to Panhandle Auto. This is Sam Serta, General Sales Manager. It's been our pleasure to serve you for the past two years. At Panhandle Auto, we have a seat for everybody. Whether you need a vehicle for yourself, a son or daughter, our team will go above and beyond to satisfy your needs and even your dreams. So again, thank you from Sam Serta, General Sales Manager at Panhandle Auto, for allowing us to earn your business. At Panhandle Auto, it's time for something different. Be water wise. Did you know that most people over fertilize their lawns and gardens? This means your fertilizer and money wash down the storm drain into our waterways where it makes dangerous algae grow. So the next time you fertilize the yard, remember you're not just fertilizing your lawn, so don't overwater or use fertilizer when rain is in the forecast. Smart waterways add to clean water. This is a message from Tri City Stormwater. Home buying is filled with decisions. Neighborhood, floor plan, fenced yard. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Home buying is filled with decisions. Square feet, fixer upper, room to grow. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. This is Nefertari. Nefertari is a six-month-old female cat. 
Um, she is just the sweetest cat ever. She loves to cuddle. She also loves to play. Um, but she kind of, she'll play when she wants to. She will mostly sit there and lay around and be lazy with you, but you can't hold that against her. She just really, really, really likes to cuddle. Um, she likes to look at her surroundings, sniff everything. She's not going to pee on anything. She's just going she's just going to sniff. Um, but she's a really, really good cat. She's super sweet, super friendly, really curious as you can tell, but she's just amazing. She is $50. Um, that includes her spay, her rabies. Um, she will get a microchip. She's all fully up to date on all of her vaccine vaccines. Um, she's really curious, loves to play. She's really, really good with other people. Um, I'm not sure how she is with cats and other dogs, but she's really good with people. So to meet this furball or any of the cats and dogs they have available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society during their new modified hours. Plus, whoever adopts the featured pet of the week will also receive a $25 Murdoch's gift card to help out with that first bag of food, a couple of toys, and lots of treats. Well, straight ahead, we'll have your midweek community calendar here on KNEB.TV News. Small business feels anything but small. That's why there's First National Bank Small Business Free Checking, so you can focus on what matters most. Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor. If you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. This summer, take advantage of Shadron State College's online classes. Our classes are flexible, no matter where you are, with starting points throughout the summer. Take a summer class to finish a degree requirement that didn't fit your fall or spring schedule, or to open up your schedule later. Summer classes can help you graduate early, and a summer internship can open doors for your career. Add Shadron State College to your summer plans today. To learn more and see the summer class offerings, visit csc.edu summer. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow Will you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, the Gehring Community Development Authority has given the green light for starting formal work on the redevelopment plan and associated TIF financing request for the move and expansion of the Crossroad Cooperative Facility on the eastern edge of Gehring. This week, the CRA approved the preliminary cost-benefit analysis showing the project would leverage $4.30 in private investment for every dollar of the $1.6 million TIF request allowing extension of rail and utilities into the city industrial park and moving the cooperative's current facility east away from a residential area. City engineer Annie Folk told the CRA members it's just the first step of the formal planning to move the project forward. We're not asking for approval tonight of the TIF, just making sure that there's no red flags and also giving everyone a chance to look at this so that if there are any concerns or anything that you would like us to address within that redevelopment plan, we can do that over the next few weeks rather than you guys seeing the redevelopment plan for the first time right before you're asked to approve it. The preliminary analysis also showed no negative impacts are anticipated on the school district or other taxing entities and employment would double from four to eight employees. The authority also approved referring the redevelopment plan to the city's planning committee for consideration once that and the TIF cost-benefit analysis are finalized. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you here next time. <laughs>